All right, I made a graph right now showing gold versus volatility. And this is in the blue that represents the gold prices in ounces. This is just in monthly average, by the way. And then the red represents the CBOE gold ETF volatility index. And if you want to look at the volatility roughly in 2008, right? It was close to 55, right? It's just like the VIX. So the higher number that you see for the VIX, that means that there's a lot of volatility, there's a lot of fear going on. And just notice a few things. It does not go in the same manner. It doesn't go in a positive slope or a negative slope. There are times where they tend to be in a negative relationship, sometimes in a positive relationship. Look at 2008 when Lehman happened around that time. See the volatility index spike up and the gold prices went down roughly to close to 800-ish, right? So this would have been a good time to buy. If you want to look at other times, right, when you saw the gold price peak, right, you saw number one gold prices like near 1900 ish this is once again an average if you want to look at volatility volatility was around 33 and then there are other times as well so you tend to see bottoms in volatility tops in gold sometimes you see tops in volatility bottoms in gold price and this goes on and on and on and there's some people on YouTube that have done videos on volatility as well and if you want to look at March of last year, this is an interesting fact, right? Volatility was hovering around like the 13 area, right? If you want to look at gold prices, right? 16, 1700 ish. And then started to crash gold prices, volatility started to pick up. And this time, right? June, this would have been a good time actually to get into some of the best of the breed miners such as Franco Nevada. I had some people telling me about this sometime actually in August. Hey, you should get into Franco Nevada, right? That's up more than 60%. Everyone was negative during that time. I was negative. But I wasn't smart enough to get into some of the top of the line miners such as Franco Nevada. And then if you look at what's happened, I don't know, in December of last year, early this year, you're starting to see volatility. Yeah, it's going back down, which is really interesting. I think right now, I have to double check what it is right now. I just checked it right now. Volatility is 17.3, right? And it just seems that a lot of people who are bearish on gold and silver are starting to get bullish on gold and silver. I've observed this. And still, volatility tends to be lower than the average. The average I've calculated is close to 23. I calculate on a monthly average of what the volatility index since 2008. So roughly 23. So right now we're still below the monthly average. 17.3 obviously is less than 23.50. So what does it mean for gold prices? Well, we still see volatility low. We may see some golden crosses happening in the minings, excuse me, in the mining shares. And if you look at that, that could be a potential bullish signal for gold to continue to climb higher, especially now that we're starting to see tensions here in Ukraine. That doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily see gold prices go higher. It just means that there is a higher probability. And just as a disclosure, I do have many miners have been holding them for a while. So just want to point that out there. But low volatility, lower than the average, my opinion probably going to see higher gold and silver prices. What do you see? Or gold prices specifically. But that would necessarily mean that silver prices would go up as well. Now I want to ask you guys as well. What, where do you see gold and silver going up or down? Tell me which direction do you see it and why? I'm just using volatility as one gauge. There are some other gauges that you could use as well. Leave comments below. I'll talk to you later. Bye.